Hey guys, welcome to another episode of VentureTube. I'm your host, Big Bass Tony. This is part two of the Teaching You How to Bass Fish. So I hope you guys had a chance to check out my previous video, part one. We're talking about a summer bass fishing pattern. I gave you a couple of tips of where to find fish and some useful resources that you could use to help locate those fish, like the Navionics app. I hope you guys had a chance to download that and play around with it a little bit. So for today's episode, I'm going to kind of dive into some of the details on what kind of lures to use and what kind of rod and reel setup you'll need uh, to fish these deeper waters. So as a kayak fisherman, I can't bring a whole lot of gear as I could if I were on a bass boat. Your options are somewhat limited, but it sort of makes you keep things simple. I have just a old uh, Plano 3700, I believe this is, that's full of my, what I consider deep diving crankbaits, and that ranges from 10 feet up to 22 feet plus. Before I go into the baits, I wanna talk about my rod and reel setup, which is imperative to have the right setup for deep cranking. My rod of choice is the Ducket Ghost. Hopefully that's focusing. This is a seven foot six medium heavy cranking rod. It has plenty of backbone, force those bigger fish in, but uh, enough tip to be able to basically not wear yourself out when you're throwing a crankbait all day. Whenever you're looking for a rod and you're wanting to do deep cranking, just make sure to go a little bit on the longer length. You know, we're talking seven, six, you know, up to eight feet rods. Uh, that's, that's, that's kind of the standard now in bass fishing. It just allows you to get those bigger baits uh, out there and, and make longer casts. I would say the, these ducket rods for the money, this is $110. This was purchased from Academy. You really can't beat this rod for the price. Uh, it is a workhorse and I've had zero issues with it so far. Okay, let's take a moment to talk about this reel. This is a Daiwa Laguna. I purchased this reel for $29 on gandermountain.com. It normally retails for around $60. One thing you're going to find out about me, I don't have the most high-end reels and, and rod arsenals. I, I like to keep it simple. I do believe you can find some quality stuff at a cheaper price. Uh, the fish don't care if it's, you know, got painted spools and knobs. Uh, as long as it gets the job done, uh, I'm happy with it and it's always a good thing for me to save money. So don't think you got to go out and buy the most expensive gear because so and so uses it. it. It's not true at all. So again, this is a Daiwa Laguna. I believe it's a 6-4 to 1 ratio. And when you're cranking, you, you, you want to kind of keep with a lower gear ratio. Uh, basically, again, it keeps your crankbait running slower. It keeps it in that strike zone longer. And also, it keeps you from wearing yourself out. When you have a high-speed reel, you're cranking and you're fighting that deep dive and crankbait, and you're throwing it all day, uh, it becomes very tiring. So you can go much lower than 6-4 to 1. You can go to 5-3 to 1, 5-7 to 1. Um, or it, it's all personal preference. If you want to use a high-speed reel and just crank it a lot slower, that's also an option. So if that's all you have, you, can, you always have the option to make whatever you have work for you. It may not be ideal, but again, uh, if you're on a budget, this will work. So again, real briefly, seven foot six, medium heavy cranking rod, bait caster. This is a Daiwa Laguna, six four to one gear ratio. Uh, as far as the line, I use 15 pound fluorocarbon. You can drop that down to a 12 if you're trying to reach deeper depth. This isn't the most expensive fluorocarbon. This is Seaguar. You can purchase it at Walmart for around $10 to $11 a box for I think it's 250 yards. Uh, works real well. Never had any problems with it. Of course, you can spend as much money as you want on this stuff, but again, I don't, I don't see it necessary. Let's take a moment to talk about lures. Again, my home lake behind me, or maybe you can see it. I got Zeus behind me, but my home lake is Lake Conroe. This bait right here, I even have it on my keychain. It's a 6XD Strike King with blue back chartreuse. This guy right here has won more tournaments on this lake than probably any other bait I know. And it's something that I, I throw a lot. If you're sitting in 20 feet of water and you see fish suspended at about 17 feet, this probably could get the job done. The Strike King 6XD is a dynamite lure for cranking in the summer, whether it's deep water ledges, uh, early morning bites out there off humps, uh, drop-offs. It is a great lure. You have to take your time with it. 
you're not going to catch a lot of numbers with it, but what you are going to catch are quality fish. And as a tournament angler, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, a phrase you hear a lot is matching the hatch. What does that mean? Well, it's exactly what it states. You, you want to match the bait. So match your lure with the size of the bait and the color and try to get it to mimic a real bait fish. Sometimes when throwing a deep diver, just won't work because maybe the bait just isn't that size yet. Or if you're looking for numbers, you might want to go smaller. The only problem with that, some of the smaller baits like this here are only rated up to maybe seven or eight feet. But that's one of the advantages we have with a kayak is we control. If you cast this baby out 80 yards behind your kayak, well, you can get it down to around 15 feet. Sorry, I have some geese eating my tires. I don't know if you can see that. It's hard to find places to film nowadays. Now I got a guy revving his boat on his trailer. Taking something like this little guy and trolling it, you can get it to that depth where the fish are. Go, go, get, get. If you watch one of my recent videos on Gibbons Creek, that's exactly what I was doing. I was trolling this same exact little small crankbait, getting it down to a 15 foot depth and catching fish. It wasn't quality fish, but it was fish nevertheless. And it was a tough day of fishing. I had talked to several boaters and they hadn't caught anything or a couple of them had only caught two. I caught several, so I was pretty pleased with that. So that's just a tip for you guys. Um, and even trolling from a kayak you can find out where the fish are. Yeah, you may be looking on your fish finder and you're finding fish, but just because you see them on there doesn't mean they're hungry and eating. When trolling, you know, you'll, you'll go through those spots. Okay, hey, they hit it right here. I can mark that spot on my electronics or I can throw out a marker buoy and I can turn around and try different lures to try to catch those fish that are schooling or setting up on that point or structure or whatever it is and try to prepare yourself better and, and fish that area more thoroughly and put more fish in your boat. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Deep diving crankbaits and even trolling smaller crankbaits and getting them at a deeper depth is uh, very effective from a kayak uh, during these hot summer days. I want to show you one more tip on what I do when I'm practicing uh, which makes it more convenient when I'm changing lures. Okay I've turned my camera around here so you guys hopefully can get a good view. Now I'm not a big swivel person but for running my crankbaits I am. What I like to do is just take a standard swivel. The swivel always has, the, well this part is the swivel and then it has the clip. What I like to do is take my fingernail clippers and cut the loop and remove this section, the actual swivel, and just use the clip. That way I can quickly change crankbaits. And what that also does is keep your treble hooks from getting tangled in the swivel. When you have this extra length on here, it always seems to get caught up in your treble hooks. So if you just take a pair of uh, fingernail clippers, it'll cut it very easily. You can remove that section. You don't really need the swivel anyway. You're throwing a crankbait. It's not going to be spinning and turning on you. Maybe when you catch a fish, but it's nothing that's going to harm your line or weaken it. And that's a real easy, quick way to change out your crankbaits. Now for me, I do not use swivels during a tournament. Uh, big fish will bend them out, no doubt. But for practice to figure out what they're biting on, this little trick right here uh, works great and it saves you more time on the water from having to tie knots. Okay guys, last but not least, one of my favorite techniques for bass fishing just about year round is the Carolina rig. I'm not going to go in detail in this video about it because there's a lot of key things that I want to touch on that's going to help you out. So I'll probably do a complete separate video on the Carolina rig, but I just want to tell you, maybe you already know about it, give it a shot during the summer. Uh, you can catch big fish on a Carolina rig. Okay guys, that about wraps up part two of this series. I hope you took something from it. I hope these tips help you out when you're on the water. Appreciate you watching. Like this video. Let's share it. Let's teach other people how to fish. And I will catch you guys on the next episode. God bless. Come on. He wants to be on camera so bad. Now it's your chance, buddy. Now it's your chance. Those guys are ruining my fishing spot. <laughs>